Um, I, I'm not sure what they're planning to do here. I would feel worse now about picking that hero because of the Slardar. Uh, I think the Hoodwink is what I was talking about, a setup hero for the Storm and the Io to be able to play. Um, I like that they can put Hoodwink or Io with the Slardar. I'm not sure what they prefer. And Slaughter is, to me, a hero that is rarely picked, but he is very effective when teams know what they're doing with it. Um, okay, do you think my games have that? I, I mean, I'm assuming they would, otherwise they, why would they draft it? Because whilst you don't like into Razor, I think I've seen Slaughter crush lanes like Drow Rangers and stuff, as long as he has a support that helps him get on top of them. Mm. I don't think I was that hero. No. I actually think Hoodwink would be really good to lane with him. Sure. But then what do you pair together with this Io is the, the question for the laying phase. Like, is it something that's just able to stand back and use all the space that you're able to get with all this lockdown? Like, I don't know, a Luna or something like that uh, might be decent enough. Um, the Ember Spirit, again, is a, it's a good matchup. I'd say it's slightly favored against the Storm Spirit in the laning phase, um, just because of the Flame Guard increase. You're able to outrun something like the Slaughter, which is always quite nice. Um, yeah. You know when a relocate's coming, so you're not going to be super vulnerable to being caught out by that, which is always good. I don't know. Like, I'm not. I'll be honest. I'm not crazy about either of these drafts at this stage. What do you think they're both lacking? Well, <laughs> a carry and an offlane. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, an but like, <laughs> no, <I'm just> <laughs> uh, I would. Synergy in the laning phase is what I'm feeling is lacking a little bit yeah. right now. I was. Uh, his partner is a little dependent on the offlane, so it's kind of unfortunate that Gambit have last pick here. Because, uh, like, if you're putting Io in a safe lane, then you need a carry that, if the offlaner is aggressive, you need a hero that can protect it, like an Ursa. If uh, the offlaner is kind of weak, you maybe want something that can abuse that and be more aggressive with the Io. Because when Io is in the safe lane, he has the benefit of the lane generally being like longer for him to chase down, uh, which means when you have an aggressive lane, like the offlaner is a much more threat as long as the lane equilibrium is closer to the tower. I reckon they might go. Oh, damn, I was about to say the axe here. Take Melis's axe the, away from it. <laughs> well, yeah, and it's with the Io, right? Something that you know is going to be relatively close by to another one of these heroes. Another one of these that we see sometimes is the Underlord come through. I mean, Hoodwink, you can't be quite as speedy. You lock a Storm Spirit in place, and Io can't get, you know, be quite as mobile as well. I would like to see Melis play Spirit Breaker. Mm -hmm. It's still in. Oh, it's a great. Uh, obviously, you've talked about in the past the Eye of Shard makes it really hard to kind of get on him. But I feel like uh, Hoodwink is a hero that likes to play in the trees and and duck in and out. And Spirit Breaker is able to yeah. find and kill. Yeah, you just don't her. go on the Eye. You go in the Hoodwink yeah. instead. Yeah, they also don't have like a lot of long range stuns. Mm -hmm. Like Storm likes to walk up close and pull you. Slardar likes to you know crush in place. Uh, Spirit Breaker, when moving at the speed that he does, it's very easy to disrupt all of these heroes in a fight. Mm. Uh. We could even see, like, maybe even something like a Centaur wouldn't be horrible for, for Gambit. I think, again, it's going to be dependent on what mind games pick. They're going to be able to react to that accordingly. I just think when you've got a Razor, Centaur enables you quite well. It, it lets you have a bit of that space creation against a Slaughter, which is always nice. It enables you to set up if you hear the relocate coming in. And again, it's one of those heroes that you've got a decent AoE on the, the Hoof Stomp, so you might be able to catch out something. Yeah, I would just, like... Uh a stun to like let your snap fire do, do a thing in a fight yeah, yeah. uh maybe th they could go a hundred different ways i think there's a lot of good offlaners in the pool that melees could play you could still pick tide hunter yeah you could s you could pick the centaur you mentioned um you could pick like even elsie is probably pretty good mm -hmm. uh if you were trying to run as like a, a ball as gambit they have it's weird though right because you yeah. need to catch the io basically because well, I mean, Ember Spirit, if he's on point, he can be there to Searing Chains the Ion, make sure you don't get that relocate save off, but it, it just makes it a little bit more challenging. So they're going to go the Luna, kind of like what we were expecting, right? Uh, oh. Just to be able to pair together with this Io quite nicely in lane, it means the Slada Hoodwink is going to be a pretty decent lane, so it makes a lot more sense now on man Mind Games for Mine, and it gives them a bit more of that tower-taking potential as well. But how are Gambit going to be able to respond to this? I mean, when you think of an offlaner that's good against Luna, other than Darkseer... Sanky. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I mean, Darkseer okay. could actually be pretty decent here, right? Uh, Yeah. With with Ember Spirit, you have a person to play with. Mm -hmm. mm. Surge the Razor. I, I think yeah. Darkseer is a little sad when your 4 is not someone you can not play with, though. Not a melee hero. Yeah, yeah. yeah, true. It's not, like, impossible to play, but... Yeah. I like Tide more as like uh, just to fill in the holes. Like no one really enjoys Tide into Luna. The lane is Luna favored, especially with mm. an Io. But 
He's going to ravage. He's going to do his job. He's going to let Snapfire get off the burst damage with her ult and give Lauren off and Alberka the games. They are like the big cause. Now, do you reckon this is going to be the IO laning together with Slaughter? Because Big Num's got it. It's not Slayer playing it. So could be. it could just be the yeah. the switch up in lanes, which we see. You know, IO tends to be the hero, maybe Weaver as well, the ones that can switch the lanes up a little bit. But I would be feeling a whole lot more confident with the IO paired together with this Luna as opposed to the Hoodwink, um, just because I feel like you're seriously sacrificing Slada's lane if you're just pairing an IO together with him against this Razor. Yeah, I think the only benefit they have if they swap the lanes is that like Hoodwink plus Luna is probably more kill potential than IO Luna. So maybe they want to go ultra aggressive on the lane. Mm. Well, we are looking to be jumping into game number one. We are in a new region, Eastern European Dota, which means we have some new casters for you guys. And that's going to be Lyrical and Trent. Thank you so much, Nat and Trent. Apparently, I didn't get the freaking memo. All you guys are wearing stuff. I do have some cool PJs that, are, that I'm wearing, but not nice, as cool nice. as y'all's onesies. Um, but uh, yeah, yeah, we got onesie game coming up, everybody, right now. This, God, that, that really would have worked for the best of onesies. That, yeah. that They probably used that joke this morning, but we're into the best of threes now. All right, no uh, more BO1s. That's fair. I really uh, and dug these out of the closet. They're so dusty. I, I, I'm I, getting out of these the second the camera's off. I'm sorry. The I bit has gone too you, far. <laughs> once you become a parent, you kind of need to have a onesie, though, right? Like, isn't that That's sort true. of a, a law yeah. or something yeah. up there in Canada? It's like coveralls if you're a mechanic. You know, eventually the vomit okay. just comes out, and then you just strip it off, and your normal human clothes are there again. That's what I call it when I'm not dealing with my children. Well, something I become human again. Too. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> it was one of those things. I remember you just being at a, a, a TI and, and just like having this thing of like, oh my God, I don't have to worry about this tiny child anymore. I, I can sleep. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, but people uh, that are not going to be able to sleep if they lose mm. this series, Mind Games facing off against AS Monaco Gambit. Uh, there is still um, actually not on here, but uh, in game it shows unique. So if you're watching in game, uh, it is not unique. It is Mind Games. Um, and. I, I think that this is going to be a tough one. Uh, what do you think about the drafts, though? A anything that really jumps out at you? You were talking a lot about the Luna getting picked up as the panel. Yeah, I think that, uh, I mean, everyone knows Aya Luna is pretty good. So I'm curious to see how well her game goes. Just because, like, I, I feel like Gambit must have seen it coming, like, a million miles away. Because, right. you know, they, they even, like, banned out the Medusa, which I thought was kind of surprising. Uh, and then... In the end, they, they wanted to keep the one Razor, so that's why they kind of left it that way. Uh, and uh, and it's Alberka Razor, you know? Alberka is... He's one of our favorites, I feel like. I don't know about you. I love this guy. He, I find him very exciting to watch. I never quite know what's going to happen. So uh, I, I want to see his matchup versus her. Right, I agree. And I think that more often than not, in recent memory, it's been poor. Uh, Sheep was talking about his <laughs> Monkey King uh, performance. <laughs> Dude, it's Whatever been rough. do you mean? Listen, both these teams are one and five. Okay, it's it's been a rough season for both of them. I don't think it's gone the way that either of them wanted it to. Uh, not that that's necessarily a terrible thing, but it's just you know it's, it's the reality of the situation. This is a battle to stay in Division One, uh, but we've seen flashes of brilliance, and I think that's kind of what you're alluding to with Alberka, and particularly like she was talking about that Monkey King performance uh, playing mm. on the Razor this time around. We'll see if he can have some success, like success here. Yeah, Razor in particular, unfortunately, like, the thing that really impresses me about Alberka is that he seems to have, like, crazy, like, I mean, part of reactions is always, like, the anticipation of something happening, which is why you can react to it so quickly, but, like, his ability to utilize things like the mischief and everything is just, I, I've never seen it as good as him, which is crazy, considering, like, the state his team's in. But Razor, not necessarily the flashiest hero. Right. Oh, nice snipe there up top by Happy, though. That was good. Did get the regen That's... in time, though. Hmm, true. That would have been way sicker if he managed to kill that, too. Yeah, I, I agree. I know what you mean. There's, like, not as many opportunities to outplay for uh, for Alberka here unless he goes, like, some weird build, which is probably bad on Razor anyways. Um, mm. But we'll see. Uh, and then, obviously, uh, it's going to be the, the setup of Luna Io in the later stages. Right now, um, Slardar playing together with him it's going to be a lot of potential pressure so happy's going to need to make sure he doesn't get caught uh, out of position by the big fish man super scary yeah this is a very frightening duo 
obviously Io just gives everything that Slardar wants. So, uh, even though you are Bane and Razor, which is one would think to be one of the more like safe and secure laning duos that you can even have in the safe lane in Dota 2, this is still such a frightening uh, duo of heroes that like contesting something like the hard camp is going to be nearly impossible. So, just needs to do a really good job of keeping that blocked off of Sentry. So far, so good. Uh, they're not contesting it. Bignum not bringing any sentries at all, so they don't even plan on trying to reset the aggro, which means that they should farm pretty well into the tower. Yeah, have a nice time of it. Uh, won't be under that much pressure here, at least until, you know, they can try and resubmit and get uh, control of this lane, which isn't likely to happen until, like you said, you get that uh, sentry being brought out. In the mid matchup, there's another little combo that, uh, well, actually, you can take a look at bottom also. Just this, this hoodwink trying to deal with Melis. Uh, when Gambit have looked good, he has been one of the big, like, sort of game changers. Think about that axe fondly. He hasn't gotten it again in a while, but playing on a Tide this time, uh, we'll see if him and Immersion can make something happen. Mm -hmm. I could see them getting a kill in this lane for sure, with, like, a Hoodwink and a Luna. Like, one good cookie into a Scatter Blast. If you're just a little bit too greedy with your HP bar, uh, as uh, one of these two Radiant heroes, you can easily go down. Also, shout out to Slayer wearing the, the new cosmetic on Hoodwink. I mean, that's that's just a pleasure to watch, honestly. That, that thing is boss. so creepy looking. It, it, it's nice here, but like in the sort of pig screen, it looks terrifying. The little fox mask. <laughs> the little demon is. squirrel fox. Thing. Yeah. It's like going to take over my soul. Um, the matchup that we haven't really gotten to take a look at all that much yet, uh, and FN is winning fairly significantly at this point, is the Storm Spirit versus Ember. Uh, in mid and if there's one guy that's sort of made the big difference in mind games consistently it's been fn he's the one that's been uh you know sort of keeping them in games or allowing them to have an opportunity to win it and get some good pressure there didn't quite burn through the flame guard two points in it right now on the runoff oh and look where he's going to yeah. off to your bounty runes sucker nice well played Never refuse school. FN, uh, he will be able to pick up the water and he's probably just going to push out the wave and then go and maybe steal the other uh, bounty as well, depending. Yeah, will he get even there. get a water rune, I guess? I guess he just used his slight, so there's no chance at a steal. Yeah. There goes Hiddling's Courier, too. We're still uh, four minutes in here, ladies and gentlemen, and... Uh... Oh, well, I was going to say no first blood, but then they started diving Alberga, But Looking for it. Happy. Uh, it's a hard kill to get. To be fair against the bane or the razor there's a nightmare save or whatever but I i'm looking across all the lanes and things are looking very good right now for mind games um also the team that comes in with a little bit more momentum the early win that gambit got was at the beginning of the season uh and it was mind games who just recently was able to to pick up one against empire um so, you oh, know, a is. little bit of a change is, yep, they move on in and get the kill. First blood, Melis dropping down and looking for more, maybe. Immersion will be able to make his way out. Well, on top of getting that kill, they're also going to get a crazy amount of farm on Petushara up here in this top lane. They pulled the wave through. Uh, he, he's still just waiting to farm this up. And, of course, it means he's going to get the next wave there, too. Kind of hold that all back. This looks really nice for Slayer. Now, Burka's just sitting back like, hello. Can I have some creeps at some point, please? Oh, no. Yeah. Oh, no. Please. Not again, FN. No. <laughs> oh, God. No. This is exactly what happened earlier. Please come back. <laughs> yeah, that uh, that that's a little scary. God, please, no. That would be the worst I thing. I think it, it actually was like 5.15 as well when right. it happened. Yeah. So if you guys are just joining, uh, there may have been a tiebreaker best of one in which someone couldn't reconnect at five minutes, and they had to play 4v5. Uh, in the um, best one for relegation. Oh my god! Oh my god! Please. Okay. Okay. That's not the bug. Oh, he's, All right. He's, he's just. He's just. Okay. Dude, All I. Right. I. Whew, I gotta. I gotta grab myself. To settle down. I was getting very worried for a second there. It's like you're mad beating right there. <laughs> I just can't come back. <laughs> god, that was that was scary. Um. Okay. So back home for FN. Uh, we'll have level six done. Loranoff also finishing it off for Ember. So waiting for that next rune, which will be up in 30 seconds to see uh, if there will be any early rotations here or not. Well, 
Well, you know I love six-minute runes. Everybody comes for the party. You don't know if it's top or bottom. We got both supports on the Dire Bean. Then we got a Remnant on bottom. They are not giving this over to FN. Surely. Run off. Jumps in. And it's going to be bottom. And Remnant down. Lorenoff gets it. Arcane. Can they kill off Happy, though? That'd be a nice little pickup for him. And last hit comes through from Bignum. Well played. Oh, that's so frustrating. You you bring everyone. You have three heroes in the mid lane just trying to make sure this Storm Spirit doesn't get a rune. And you end up feeding one of your supports for it. So in the end, he still wins. Now he's going to go back to the jungle. He's got some stacks set up here, too. Grabs a bounty rune. Just like, oh, oh, more creeps mid, too. Perfect. So, obviously, a little bit easier most of the time for Storm to utilize these six-minute runes just because you just have, like, straight-up zip pull and Ember starts to scale a little bit better with some of the other items that you get for, like, increasing your abilities. So, not the same pressure on uh, Lernov to actually rotate here, but, I don't know, Storm is just, like, it, it's all a move just to slow down Storm. Right. And it didn't end up even really slowing him down because he still was no. able to be involved in a kill. Yeah. Um, but he missed that last so, hit, so we're good. Yeah, it's fine. Sure. <laughs> Granted, he didn't actually get the last touch on the kill either, but some more time for Petushara. Moves on in to top, actually. Alberca in some trouble and going to drop. Oh, man. That th two points early on. Actually, there's only one point in overcharge, but it was enough. That's a rough and, one. Man. Yeah. Well, what happens when level six comes on Petoshara too? Like, if you don't have uh, Happy close by in the Bane, you're in big trouble. Like, pretty much at all points. Can he even come back here now? Because Petoshara does have six. This is scary. Like, I don't know. I feel like Ember needs to be ready to rotate if, if there's, like, a, a dive happening. We'll see what Alberka decides to do. But this is a scary-ass lane now. I like your style. Uh, he'll still get the wave close to the tower again, so he should be fine for a while. And as you said, it'll come down to like TPs. But uh, we got eight minutes here. Well, and again, it's bottom though. <laughs> and happy hello again. Very nice to see you, FN. Ooh, actually, doing more damage onto Lorenoff here. He's got remnant though, so should be fine. There's no way unless bushwhack gets the remnant out. Yeah, we can see Alberca. He decides, I don't want to stay bottom for a little bit at the very least. He's going to pop ulti, head off to the jungle. Three points oh, in that Jesu. plasma field. Ooh, Jace. Can he find immersion for the kill here? Back towards mid, there's also action happening, but they won't be able to find the kill on the IO. Instead, it's just the kill onto the snap fire. That was like the max range of Bushwhack. I can't believe he got pulled in there. Very, very nice start for mind games. I mean, you take a look at the net worth and all of the top inhabited by the Radiant. Um, mind games are doing everything right now. Lorenov trying to catch back up. He's farming up some stacks in the jungle, but you can see Slayer soaking <laughs> XP. <laughs> oh, what a good feeling as a Hoodwink 5. You know, oh you're already... Oh, the steals. <laughs> <laughs> he jumps away afterwards. Still one creep blocking that camp. How much Damn, vision did, did he even have? I don't know. I think that he was like timing it off of the XP that was coming in, I guess. That's the only thing that makes sense to me. Yeah, or maybe he had a tree in the in the tree line or something. Because you get like what, the little bit of ground vision from the tree from the yeah. acorn shot? I don't know. I, I didn't get there quite in time. But that was a very nice steal at the end. And now he's just right back there holding that bottom lane as well. Ellis, not really able to do all that much at the moment on this Tidehunter. Uh, the panel was talking about the potential for a dark seer uh and opting to go for this tide hunter so we'll see uh, you know if we can make some use of this initial ravage that uh, we're likely going to see here and fn finds himself a regen rune for storm very nice pickup there and mind games i mean if they want to they could get active I think the uh, the discussion between the Titans and the, the Dark Seer is pretty interesting too, because like if you have Dark Seer, you probably would have gotten a kill on Luna in lane. Like that tends to happen, or she just has to leave the lane like flat out like way earlier, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but I think Tide's easier to execute in a lot of ways. You don't need as much like coordination with the Ion or with the uh, Ion Shell. Uh, you just have Ravage versus Io plus one, which is a pretty important tool, obviously. But you also have three heroes that are pretty happy to buy BKB on the earlier end. Right on uh, on mind games, so 
We'll see. We'll see how Tide does. I mean, you would love to be able to send him in here to stop this push, but I don't know if it would end up happening. They do have a grip on Happy. And, I mean, it's still tough, even with the, the IO. Yeah, they're just going to instead try and get some counter pressure down bottom. So, uh, Tier 1 Towers looking to be traded here. I don't oh. imagine that my games can defend this bottom one. No, I know how this story goes. We trade Tier 1s, and then we ravage mid lane, right? Isn't this... Uh, all, all things okay. point to the middle lane now. They're going to rotate through the Radiant Jungle, heading towards trying to pressure that tower. That is Shara, That's in the up. meantime, finishes off the Blink Dagger under Vision. So they know that this is here, and... I mean, if they show up mid, you can go for some type of counterplay, but it might be a little bit scary. <laughs> Everyone just runs a bit. It's just like a Tide and Ever just farming mid lane. Yeah. I wonder if they're smoking, guys. And melee is going to go play it cool like they're totally not smoking. Go hit the mm. lane by himself. All right, he takes the third point in Kraken Shell, too. Immersion? Oh, they're, they're ready uh, to back him up. Oh, no, they're going the other way? Oh, my God. That, oh, that can't happen. And now the relocate coming in afterwards. Lorenoff is there. Looking for it. Arcane Rune already down, but I think they just go back out afterwards. FN stay behind. We'll see if Bignum takes him back home or not. And it looks like they will. So what's interesting there is that if you don't have Tide, if you have Darius here, they relocate more aggressively, I think. Like, they relocate right. into the tree line next to your Tier 1, but they have to be very cautious about the relocates because of the Ravage. And in the end, it's a little bit wasted. Plus, Renov did grab that Arcane Rune. Oh, oh, the Bushwhack, though! They find him! He's dead! Bignum on a killing spree for the Io. Not often you see it. They're going to get this tower. But losing that Ember there hurts. And now, Melis, I mean, he's got Ravage, but they don't have Ember for 20 seconds. They do have Immersion Ulti if they want to go for it, but no. The break! They get the break on to Melis, find the kill. A 4,000 goalie and right into Roche! Dude, it's 8 to 0. I did not realize. They are kind of dismantling them. I mean, objective wise, it's still pretty good, but Immersion now found! FN is there! and dead on immersion this is going to be a 13 minute roche for fn what a ward i mean that oh, they just bodied them right man. there everything was prepped for this roche like you can kind of see the thinking there of gambit being like, okay well they got a kill so they like went right in the roche pit right but they're probably not ready like i'm gonna go camp up on this high ground and they have a ward just right next to their shrine so they just end yeah. up getting bodied their outpost oh i did it i did the thing <laughs> It annoys me when I hear it's people call classic. it a shrine, and then I called it a shrine. That's right. <sighs> Glass houses, Trent. Mm. Glass <laughs> shrines. <laughs> I will no longer throw stones. Well, Storm is about to complete an orchid now. And FN, I mean, this is where he just goes ham. Like, uh, this could really start falling off the rails here soon. Slayer spots the regen rune, denies it. FN didn't want to jump for it. And we'll see if they decide to go for a uh, smoke up play now, or if they just want to farm the map with this age. Just like, I guess they could try and secure mid on mine game. It's still scary fighting into Ravage, I guess. Hmm. Uh, yeah, I don't know. We're all just farming BKBs through this Aegis, I feel like. So you, you still play aggressive because you know that you're, you're still well ahead. They still need BKBs on Gambit too, so. I would be very pleased if they got the top tier two with this Aegis. I don't know if that's realistic because they still have to go through the tier one mid to try and like open up all the avenues here, but Perushara, oh he's, oh no, they got him. Yeah, Root, well played. Tries to beat down on Lorenoff, but not gonna happen. And Alberca, he's trying to do like sort of a, a sort of, I don't know, AFK farming razor in a way here. Um, you know, has been popping ulti mm -hmm. continuously, goes for the Falcon Blade into Maelstrom, and only now is he going to start queuing into BKB. So when that does come around, it's going to be a pretty strong timing for uh, for Alberca. But against all this minus armor too, it could be it could still be a little bit susceptible to gain burst. Oh, or Jump. mid though. That's a Immersion. He's going to drop. <laughs> you know, it really should still be 10 to 0 because if if he had waited like four more seconds, it would have been nighttime and Petishara lives there. You know? Yeah. Yeah. More than likely, at least. That's a dominant performance here for Mind Games. 
The fact that you haven't been able to ravage yet or find any sort of a situation where it feels good is pretty rough. Uh, definitely agree with the Ags build. I think that uh, it suits his play style with the way that we've seen melees. Oh, no. Uh, but also just the game. Oh, no. They take down oh. Alberka and now going to oh, look goodness. for more. Happy's in trouble. Cookie trying to save him. It's it's not going to be enough in the end. A double kill for FN. 8,000 gold lead. They're going straight into BKBs, Trent. Like, they have it done on Luna now at 16 minutes. I, I This game is really falling off the rails. Ah, the old disassemble. Yeah. And by the old, I mean the thing that we do every single game now. It's very hip. It's very trendy to uh, dismantle your items, you know. Well, all right. We gotta find a plan here. I, yeah. So let's see. We're on. Uh, we're on gambit. Let me put myself in the mindset here. Um, let's see. Clearly, I must be playing Bane because someone's feeding a little bit more than me, but I'm still feeding a lot. So I'll, I'll take right. the three deaths. You know, you can you, you can go. be snapped with the four deaths. Perfect. Uh, game plan. Oh, that's a tough what is the game plan? Yeah, I guess you you try and find the IO plus one because you don't want to find someone else and get relocated on, right? Yeah. So For sure. you try and get the old nightmare fiends grip combo on the IO plus one, but they're just gonna follow them like all over the map right now. Because why do anything else as Pedushara and Slayer? Right. No, absolutely. Yeah, that's that's all you need to do in this game. <laughs> look, look what they're doing. They're just they're sending the IO plus one up ahead. They're walking in like a little semicircle, and they're all just ready to jump and initiate when they try to go on them. Alberka, he's trying to rush as quickly as he can. This BKB, but he gets found, and there is no way to salvage him. He just gets blown up. Oh, and now they turn on to Happy. He's going to die, too. They stacked up these Ancients to just try and inject that gold into the Razor, and it didn't come quick enough. Lorenoff is almost at BKB. Like, it feels like that has to be the moment that they're waiting for, but this pressure just came too early from Mind Games, and Gambit were not ready. And it's all backed up by a Luna that hasn't even had to be very involved this game, you know? Yeah. Like, she, she's just the backstop for when someone eventually starts dying on mind games. I'm just like, oh, and by the way, we have a huge Luna. Yeah. yeah she's pretty terrifying. Uh, also transfers over the Brigand's Blade now, too. So, Mask of Madness, Dragonlance, BKB. God, they, oh my they God. need they to find a good They were all right on a ward, dude. They all just smoked, on, like, standing on a ward. <laughs> Jesse like, <laughs> Look at Jesse's position. He's like, okay. No, not they again. find him right again. Doesn't even get a chance to get the BKB off. It's just going to die. And now looking for Mel SE2 in some trouble. Going to drop. No chance for a Ravage. Just the absolute disrespect as they take him down one by one. Yet again, they find Alberka. GG. 19 minutes. And it was much more uh, substantial lead than even that. That was a rough one, man. Oof, oof, man. Slayer's the greatest Hoodwink player alive, apparently. <laughs> Double yeah, right? bushwhack free hand onto an Ember. Ending any hopes of a comeback several times this game. All right, so, you know, you yeah. just kind of you just <laughs> let it go. Game one never happened. Turns out that they just, you know, pretend you forfeit game one. Maybe, maybe you disconnected and didn't come back. Uh, this is going to be a very hard mental reset, I would say, for AS Monaco Gambit. Well, I, I agree to some extent. The thing that maybe you can sort of, like, lay your hat at is they lost all three lanes, and you can just be like, sorry, guys, bad draft, or something like that, right? Like, maybe they can it. just somebody lie, you know? <laughs> like, that's yeah, all that yeah. needs to happen. <laughs> just lie and get everybody on the same page. Um, wow. Yeah. So just lie. That's going to be our, our suggestions for uh, Great Monaco advice. Gambit as they uh, look to reset in uh, in game number two. But for now, we're going to go to a quick break. When we get back, the panel's going to break it all down. See you then.